the other day. She heard in a shiul that the Gemara says, Nashim, women, what do they go to Gan- what do they go to Gan Eden for? What do they go to Gan Eden for? They don't learn Torah like like uh, like uh, like guys. At least they're not supposed to. I mean, supposed to learn the basics, but they're not obligated to learn Torah your mom valayla. They're supposed to know the basics. In this generation, the basics is already a lot. But the point is, is that what are, what do are women go to Gan Eden for? So the Gemara says they go to Gan Eden for sending their husband to Shiur Torah to learn Torah, and for sending their kids to learn to learn Torah. That's what they go to Gan Eden for. So a woman asked me, he's like, listen, I have a problem. What's the problem? Okay, my kids, I'm sending them to yeshiva. But my husband, he doesn't want to learn. He wants to be an Amaretz. He wants to watch sports. He wants to hang out with his friends. He doesn't want to learn. I tell him, come, he doesn't want to go. So what, I'm not going to go to Gan Eden because of my uh, Batlan husband? That's not fair. I'm doing mitzvot. I have my hair covered. I Shabbat. I make 18 dishes, salads, this, that. Not even catering. No, so how come I'm not going to go to Gan Eden? That's not fair. So wait, wait, hold on a second. Understand. HaKadosh Baruch Hu says... Sending them, sending them to the shul, sending them to yeshiva, meaning try, try your best. He didn't say succeed. He didn't say they go to Gan Eden if their husband turns into a big tzaddik. They go to Gan Eden if their husband turns into a big talmit chacham. It doesn't say that. It says they send them to the shul. They push them to go. How much? Never end. Now, a woman says, yeah, I tried a few times. He said, no. Now he even argues with me. So, what should I do? The answer is, again and again. Why? Because you go up to Shemaim, and Hashem, you're going to tell Hashem this excuse. You're going to say, listen, Hashem, I told my husband 15 times, go to the shiur, he doesn't want to. So what? What, what, what am I going to do? I lived with him for 50, 60 years. He didn't want to go. I asked him 15 times. So Hashem says, okay, you know what? You have a good point. Let's see what else, what else happened in your life. You were married to him for what, 50, 60 years? Okay, so let's see. Oh, you remember when you wanted that new fridge? You remember you wanted that new fridge and your husband says he can't afford it? So you pushed him a little bit. How many times did you ask him for the fridge? Oh, look at that. You asked him almost every day for six months. Almost every day for six months you mentioned something about this fridge. It's 180 days you asked for the fridge. Oh, you remember when you wanted the new car? Remember? Let's see. Two years you complained about not having a new car. Two years. All right, you remember the jewelry that you wanted? Five years you complained that you don't have enough jewelry. The shoes, too much. So how come for the shoes, for the fridge, for the car, for the jewelry, for all the material, you complained to him to no end until you got it. But when it came to spirituality, you tried a few times. He said, no, you gave up on the whole thing. How come? So HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, if you try to send them to the Shiur Torah, to get them to go learn Torah, at least as much as you tried for all the other stuff, then maybe you have a case. But the reality is, that's not true. All of us, when we want something, we don't stop. We don't stop. You have to use your wisdom as a woman. You have certain part of your wisdom that's much higher than the men. You have certain intuition. You have a sixth sense that men don't have. So you have to use your intuition. You, what do you do? You simply tell him, go. He doesn't want to go. Now, you try to entice him with food, with gifts, with all types of things that you can figure and understand that I don't have to explain to you. You try to get him to go to the shoe. Now, that's not enough to go to the shoe. That's not enough. What else? When he comes back from the shoe, you wait for him, even if it's 2 o'clock in the morning. Why? Because it's important for you. And you tell him, honey, I waited for you. Look, I made you this food. I figured it's 2 o'clock in the morning. You just came back from learning. You're probably hungry. I made you your favorite dish. Tell me what you learned for five. Oh, I'm tired, honey. Okay, two minutes while you're eating. Okay, I'll tell you while I'm eating. You showed them that this shoe, this Torah, is more important to you than anything else in the world. I don't want another house. I don't want another car. I don't want more jewelry. I want you to go learn Torah. Why? Because when he does all the other stuff, you don't cook him special meals all the time. But if every time... He goes to the shul, you make a special meal, you treat him special, you do nice things. All of a sudden, he feels like he's a king. For what? For learning Torah. Suddenly, he wants to do it. Suddenly, when it's a day off, there's no shul, you say, honey, can I learn Torah with you? Can we watch the shul together? Can you pick something? we we'll learn together? All of a sudden, you don't want to go to the mall to spend all the money he works hard for. You want to watch the shul Torah? 
guess what? That's going to make him want to do it. Why? Number one, it's cheaper. And number two, it's another way to connect. It's another way to connect. If you care about Torah, you'll find a way to get your husband and kids to want Torah. But if when the parents don't care about Torah, what do they expect the kids to do? What do they expect the kids to do? The kids are not going to like Torah. Why? Because the kids try to emulate the parents. So this is why Rabbi Karim, even though HaKadosh Baruch Hu told us that a woman gets to Gan Eden because she sends her husband to Torah, he also knows the power of the woman. And he knows that she can do it if she really wants to. If Rachel, Rabbi Akiva's wife, can take someone that's completely ignorant and illiterate and turn him into Rabbi Akiva, every woman in this generation can turn her husband into at least a Shomer Torah and Mitzvot. Every woman can turn her husband to somebody that watches a few shurim each week. Every woman, if you want it, as much as you want jewelry and cars and this and that and all the other stuff. You have to be clever though. 